In this video, I will talk about some of the best practices that we can follow when dealing with fonts in web pages and applications. I am Nitej and let's get started with this video. If you have been working on web applications, then you may already know we can use CSS to define and download fonts that we need for the text within our web pages. The font is not downloaded when the font face declaration is encountered by the browser but rather when the styling using the font is passed. As soon as the browsers encounter any textual content which is styled using a web font, the browser then starts to load that font. Some of the common problems when fonts are not optimized in their load times include rendering of text without font styling applied. There can also be layout related issues when the web font eventually loads and is subsequently applied to the text content. The issue then arises that when the font is applied to the text at a later stage, then the space that the text is taking can change and thus the layout can also mess up which has already been applied and being seen by the user. Let's now take a look at some of the best practices and standards to keep in mind when dealing with web fonts to make sure that our web page is optimized when it comes to its load times. I'm going to talk about these best practices in the order they come into picture and eventually being applied to textual content. First, let's talk about the font delivery. Font delivery typically involves the source of the web font and the way in which it is provided to the client. This can be done by providing the name of font family and then the source URL of the font along with the format that we are using. Over here, this is the font family and this is the URL and then this is the format. Format can differ and the format that we choose is going to dictate the size of the font file which the browser will have to download. It may look like that self-hosted fonts are the most performant way to procure them and download them from the server but the thing is Fonts hosted on a CDN server are loaded much faster than the ones which are self-hosted. Some of the reasons are that the CDN servers uses HTTP2 protocol to connect to the client which is a full multiplex mode of network communication between server and client browser. Popular CDN networks are commonly used so there is a good chance that the resources hosted on the CDN may have already been downloaded by the browser while serving another website. But then the probability of this is more if we use commonly used fonts for our web pages. If you still want to host the web fonts on our own server, then you must take the advantage of font compression and font subsetting. Font compression reduces the amount of bytes required to download and becomes even more effective when using a compression like Broadly. For this purpose, fonts in the WOFF2 format should be preferred because it uses broadly compression and has a good browser support too. And when we talk about font file compression, then we should always know what font subsetting is. So font subsetting can be used to limit the number of Unicode characters that our web page and text content needs. We often don't really need to download hundreds of Unicode characters contained within a font. The best way is to compare the network logs and verify. But font subsetting simply means having a subset of a larger font file. There are a bunch of online tools available for this to subset font files. Here is one of them which you can use. Just provide the font file and then click on this generate subset button. But also make sure that the license agreement of the font that you are using allows you to actually subset the font and then use them. Next, let's talk about font loading. So font loading is about when the browser should load the fonts. The most performant way is to write CSS font declarations within inline font declarations contained within HTML page instead of declaring in an external CSS file. The problem with external CSS files is that they need to be loaded first before the browser can connect with the font resource on a network. And if the size of the external CSS file is large enough, then a lot of text without the font styling applied to it can load before that. Similar to font subsetting, there is a property that we can use which is called as Unicode range. 
So font subsetting can have significant performance benefits, especially when the font file is large and contains hundreds of Unicode characters. But even after subsetting a font file, it makes no sense to download a font file when its character will not be used by the text within the web page. For this purpose, we can use the property Unicode range. So what we can do is we can provide a Unicode range for the font files that we are using. If the browser encounters any textual content having characters which are in this Unicode range, only then the browser will download the font file, otherwise it will not do it. You can learn more about Unicode range property in this documentation on the MDN page. Let's also talk for a little bit about pre-connecting to CDN URLs. It is always a good idea to pre-connect with third-party locations which are serving us the web fonts. This helps in making connections as early as possible and saving some time. Also avoid using preloading fonts. So preloading a font may look like a good idea but it should generally be avoided because preloading a font file may delay the loading of other critical resources that the page needs. So if you are sure that the text which needs the font is going to render initially and it is very important that it renders in its font then preload the font. Otherwise, let the browser load it when it parses the text. Also, preload ignores any Unicode range property declarations, so you must be careful in preloading your fonts. Finally, comes the best practices about font rendering. So, font rendering basically is about what should browser do with the text when the font is not yet loaded. Should the text not be rendered or should it be rendered with the default system font and update the styling when the font indeed arrives? This can be controlled by using the font display CSS property. There are different ways in which we can use it, which you can see on your screen. So let's talk about how these different values are going to work. So over here, the block period is when the font is not loaded, but the text is ready. So for example, if we will set the value block for the font display property, then for a very short time, when the text is ready, then it will be rendered in an invisible font. After that, the text will be rendered in a default font. After that, when the font which is being used by the text is fetched by the browser, then the font of the text will be swapped from the default font to the font which the text is actually using. So infinite swipe period means that the browser will wait infinitely for the font of the text to arrive and when it will indeed arrive then it will make a swap from the default font to the font which the text is using. And when swap will be set as a value then the block period is going to be extremely small but the swap period is going to be infinite. Fallback simply means that the text will have an extremely small block period what this means is even though when the text has been rendered in the default font when the actual font has not yet arrived the browser will not wait infinitely for the font to arrive it will only wait for a short period and if the actual font is not available by then then no swapping is going to take place and the text is just going to be rendered in the default font Optional value simply means that the block period is very small and there is no swap period. So if the font is not available, then the browser will not wait for it. So again, swap period is when the browser has received the font and is ready to swap the text font from default to the one which it is styled with. So these were some of the best practices and standards that we can follow when dealing with web fonts. Also, if you want to be able to download Google Web Fonts in WOFF2 format, then you can navigate to the link given in the description, which is this one. Just select any font and select the character sets which you want to be included in the font which will be downloaded. And then download the zip file which will have the font in multiple formats. For any questions, feel free to use the comments area. I am Nitej and I will see you next time. Till then, stay safe and have fun.